Hey guys, this video is going to focus on how to use the quotient rule, uh, polynomial exponent rules here. So the quotient rule pertains to when you are dividing uh, constants or variables uh, that are like numbers, like bases, but that are raised to an exponent. And the quotient rule just tells you a way that you can simplify those exponents. So the quotient rule is right over here on the screen. And the quotient rule says that when you are dividing like bases, now that's an important part, you have to be dividing like bases. So 4 being divided by a 4, and x being divided by an x. You can't use the quotient rule to divide an x by a y or something like that, or a 4 divided by a 7, things like that. They have to have the same base. Now the exponent, it doesn't matter how different they are, but the bases have to be the same. And as long as they have like bases, the quotient rule says that you are going to get that base raised to the, well, you subtract the exponents, the top exponent minus the bottom exponent. So let's jump right into these examples and let's see how that actually works. Taking a look at the first example, so we are talking about using the same base here. We have a 4 and a 4. So what we're going to do is we're going to move over that 4 dividing our like bases here. So we're going to take the first one, negative 4, minus the second one, negative 7. And we just need to clean up that subtraction there. So cleaning up that subtraction, we do have the double negative rule here. So remember, two negatives do cancel out to a positive. So that really leaves us with negative 4 plus 7, and we're left with 4 to the third power. Now, depending on how uh, the answer is expected to be left, if it likes it in exponential form, 4 to the third power is fine. Otherwise, you would go ahead and multiply this out. 4 times 4 is 16, and 16 times 4 is 64. So either one of these is a good answer, just depending on what the specific problem is asking. Moving over to example B, we're still using the quotient rule. We are using division here. The only difference with this one is that we're talking about two different bases. So we're going to be using the quotient rule to divide the fives, and then we're going to use the quotient rule all over again to divide the x's. So if we're going to divide the fives, so again, we're going to bring our base over, subtracting our exponents, 4 minus 8. 4 minus 8 is a negative 4 there. Also subtracting our x's, so I'm going to bring over the x, and we're going to do 7 minus 3, which is a 4. Now, sometimes when we're using the quotient rule, we're left with this situation when we're left with a negative exponent. And hopefully what we do know is that negative exponents are kind of like fractions that aren't simplified. Uh, anytime we have a fraction that's not simplified, we know that we need to simplify that fraction. Well, when it comes to exponent rules, anytime we have an exponent that still has a negative in it, that means we're not done. We still need to simplify that. So the negative exponent rule says this. It says anytime we have uh, a base raised to a negative power, that would be 1 over the same base, but to the positive power. So this 5 would look like 1 over 5, but to the positive 4. Now this x would still stay put. It would be up in the numerator, the same place that it, that it was at. The only thing we're taking is we're taking that 5 to the negative 4 and we're shifting it down. The way I like to look at negative exponents is that if you had a negative exponent in the numerator, you're bringing it down to the denominator and making it positive. Or had it been in the denominator, you're going to be moving it up. So this 5 is going to be shifted down. So cleaning this up a little bit, so almost think about multiplying fractions. 1 times x to the 4th is x to the 4th, and 5 to the 4th times 1 is 5 to the 4th. Otherwise, this would be our simplified problem. So let's take a look at another example here, example C. We are dividing like bases here, so we're going to move over our base there, and we're going to subtract those exponents. 2 minus a negative 5. Always be careful to make sure that when you have a few different negatives in there that you do write down this problem correctly. That minus sign is supposed to be part of the rule, otherwise the top minus the bottom. So 2 minus negative 5, well that is the double negative rule once again, so that's going to cancel out to get us 2 plus 5, which is 7, leaving us with p to the 7th power. 
Example D, so in the beginning here with example B, we have our numbers and then we have our variables. The only difference here with the numbers is that these don't have exponents attached to it, they're just regular numbers, which means this is regular division. Six divided by two is a three. Otherwise, we use the quotient rule for our variables here. So we move over the x, and six minus three is a three, leaving us with three x cubed as our final answer there. Otherwise, that is it for this video.